Hi lovers, hey you. Questions. Why do we get bored in romantic relationships, especially in peaceful ones where the other person technically isn't doing anything wrong? Why are there so many gold diggers? And what is the secret to a lasting, fulfilling relationship? Well, today we're gonna to talk about a theory that hopefully explains all of these questions. And speaking of questions, I have one for you. What is the difference between a dog who has their four basic needs met and a human who has these four needs met as well? We're gonna to get to all of those answers and a little bit more right after we check in with our sponsor, Squarespace. This video right now that you're watching is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Now, whether you're just starting out or managing a growing business, I'm telling you right now, Squarespace is the easiest place to create a beautiful website. Engage with your audience. You can sell anything from products to time to content all in one place all on your own terms. Go to squarespace.com right now. Go play around, get your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now, enjoy the video. Welcome back. The self-expansion theory basically states that we form romantic relationships in order to satisfy both our present self and our future ideal self. And if we're in a relationship where we can't really see this happening, we might struggle to really find cause for the relationship at all. Essentially, people want to use each other to get to their best version of themselves. Now, this is a paraphrase, but more or less, self-expansion theory underscores the fact that humans look at relationships as opportunities for achievement, and romantic relationships are no exception to this. As a matter of fact, they might even be the rule. So, to answer the question that I posed off the top about the puppy, what's the difference between a puppy who has their four basic needs met and a person? Well, Maslow would state that people have one more very critical need, which is self-actualization. Now, all of us know this, that we utilize relationships to become the best versions of ourselves. It starts off with parents, and it goes to friends and teachers, and if it gets a little weird along the way, maybe you try and do this through your kids. And essentially, the creators of self-expansion theory, which are Elaine and Arthur Aaron, who are married, and you might recognize from your stats textbooks, they basically agreed with all of this, except for two fundamental differences. One, they saw our needs as being more continuous than hierarchical, which meant everything is just as important along the process of life. And secondly, they felt that fulfilling personal potential had a really strong link to love and belonging, which begs the question. Why? 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 Because in Eurocentric countries like America, we refer to romantic partners as our other half. And this has a twofold meaning. One, it speaks to the gradual enmeshing that happens when we get into romantic relationships. Keyword gradual, we'll talk about that for the codependent folks later. And secondly, this speaks to the societal perception that once you're coupled up, you now become a reflection of each other. And in case that's not clear, this is the Spider-Man meme. You are my better half. And all of this oneness that we cultivate through sharing ourselves and also through the perception of oneness societally creates a phenomenon called distributed cognition. And distributed cognition essentially means I don't have to know something to know something as long as someone or something that I really trust and can rely on holds that information or that relationship. I think this is a very important concept to double click on and I'll explain why. So I once had a conversation with a very famous rapper who said he avoids romantic commitment because he believes it will stifle his career. And maybe, yeah, because if you wanna go fast, go alone. But also, the potential for overall growth that's possible when you surrender to complete intimacy is undefeated in my books. In other words, if you wanna grow far and wide, go together. So in summary, there's two parts to the self-expansion theory. One is the motivational principle, which outlines humans' primary motivation to achieve, and the other is in the inclusion of other in self principle, which outlines our instinct to bond with others in order to get more safety, material resources, social resources, perspectives, and identities. Oh my God! Wow! Question time for you. Is self-expansion theory basically a good thing, a bad thing, something you gotta keep in check? 
How does it make you feel that someone might also be attracted to you? Also, not just, but also attracted to you because they want access to your information, your relationships, and the things that you've acquired in life. Next, if you were to apply this theory to a personal story, can you please do that? Because I would love to know how it applies to your current or past romantic relationships. And lastly, I'm curious, what are some gaps that you found with self-expansion theory? Now, I will tell you a gap that I found, and Jared, thank you for coming in for this. All right, to me, there's a very big difference between what this needs to thrive and what this needs to thrive. And if you don't know the difference, all the best intentions in the world aren't gonna matter. So let's talk about that. Popping in real quick, I know I'm interrupting the video, but listen, I gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. And let me show you these little tools that they got. Check this out. Squarespace's Blueprint AI and CEO tools start a completely personalized website with a new guided design system. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrity, flexible payments. Make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools. Nobody likes to stumble around at checkout, so make it easy with Squarespace. The Fluid Engine. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor from Squarespace, it has never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. So I'm telling you right now, go check out squarespace.com, go play around, make your dream website for free with their free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Again, that is squarespace.com slash shambooty to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now enjoy the rest of this video. Why do I sound like rabbit? Why do I sound like the rabbit right there? Throw the rest of this video. Throw the rest of this video. Just enjoy the video. Self-expansion theory. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, I think it's the basis of how we got together. Uh, I know it's easy to go negative when you think about self-expansion theory because it doesn't always feel the best when you're like, oh, this person's with me because of what I can provide them. What could I provide you? What did I provide you with? S knowledge around sex. Uh, that was a heavy attraction to you because I, you know, I knew you on the internet before I knew you in person. And, you know, knowing that you studied sex and intimacy, I was like, I can get in this situation and really learn something. <laughs> so that was like a huge component to what attracted me to you. Learn something sexually so you could stay with me forever uh, learn something for me so that i could possibly use on other people that's the missing part <laughs> um and yeah i think that there is an ugly truth to that but when i really reflect on that i mean i knew that about you yeah. so i was trying to think about this in terms of our relationship because when we first got together neither of us had a lot of other things to offer the other person right i legally couldn't work at the time i wasn't sure if i could stay in the country you had just moved in with a friend you were sleeping on his couch um, but I was, for a year before we met, I was just drawn to you. And then when I met you in person, I was like, oh, here's what I can do with this. Because um, there was just such great, undeniable sexual chemistry. I'd also just finished my clinical sexology certification, to your point, And I wanted to try a lot of the things I was learning on somebody. Hmm. So I was like, okay, here's my test dummy. This is great. But the first time we hooked up, you... I tell the story a million times, but you were doing something to me sexually and the look on your face was that of a painter on his canvas. You were so like lost in the moment and I'd never seen anybody who was able to disconnect sex from societal roles or gender roles or what you think you're supposed to look like in porn and just be so authentic. And I just realized at that point there was so much that I could learn from you. So thanks. I mean, then we ended up here. Then we ended up here. <laughs> and I think, you know what I mean? As much as that was like the precipice for how we got together, I think it's continued to be a huge motivating factor in why we stay together. And I think that we talk about that. I think in the episode we talked about divorce, we're like, I think the only thing that would make me even consider, you know, um, divorcing would be if I got to a place where I genuinely couldn't see the best version of myself possible with you yeah what do you think i think that it's important that those things continue to compound and so there's a root why you guys got together i think if that stays there it's awesome and then as you add other things on there i mean i think that we are constantly um trading things that are helpful in our individual lives you know um you talking about sex for a living and filming it 
me learning how to film, me learning how to light, and then vice versa, your knowledge around um, just entire, you know, structure. I feel like I'm rambling. I should just figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they talk about self-expansion theory is that when you first get with somebody, there's a big boom of mm. like the satisfaction of this drive because there's like a new person, they have new sexual moves, new relationships that you can now meet through them. They know new things. And then once you've been together for a certain amount of time, it all that comes person's... one sometimes. Yeah. Is this something that single people could use, this theory? Could they, because I think about it, you know, uh, if I were to hear this when I was single, what, is that a reflection of what I have to offer is why it's so hard for me to get in a relationship or should I start leveling up things to hopefully attract somebody because of what I can offer? Yeah, I think that if you think about relationships or opportunities for achievement, you should reflect on like what can someone achieve through me and am I making that clear? I also think about um, artist seduction. One of the primary seduction techniques was the ideal lover. Mm. And that was the person who made you feel like the best version of yourself. So mm -hmm. even if you're not offering anything tangible, even just speaking to someone's higher self, talking to them as if they've already realized the dreams and goals that are top of mind and closest to heart for them, that in itself- Is a strong tactic. Yeah, because you're, you're, like, you're speaking into the power of somebody. So yeah. I think that there's like a lot of ways to think about it, but you should definitely think like, is somebody, is the best version of this person possible with me? And is the best version of me possible with you? Yeah. And that kind of goes to that pot thing, the, those plants. I was gonna thing. say, do you do you see any gaps in this theory? Yeah, the plant thing was like me basically saying that one, the the container of a pot, right? Mm -hmm. There are some relationships that are toxic that are just poisoning your growth altogether, mm -hmm. or that are actually help diminishing you. Mm -hmm. Then there's relationships where it's like, you got me in this pot, and I'm getting my food and my necessary sunlight, and I'm getting water, but I incapable of growing because you're not expanding mm. and that's a really hard place to be in because you're like you're not technically doing anything wrong but i just know that when i'm with you this is as far as i can go mm. um or i'm going so much slower than i knew i know i would go on by myself or with someone else so there's that uh, which is thankfully a feeling i've never had in this relationship but i've definitely had in relationships before mm. and it's a really hard like it's a you know a crushing feeling for everybody because you're like you're not bad mm. we're just you just don't inspire me and I uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the truth hurts <laughs> no, um, it's a good I think it gives a lot of language it because I, I, when I see this this theory I don't I instantly think you know if you're not automatically feeling this in your current relationship it's the end all be all um, but I think it can give you language on the reasons why you feel muddy in your relationship and then you can kind of come together and fix it together. Um, on the last point, I wanted yeah. to ask you that question because the plant analogy was also speaking to the fact that just because your intention is to grow a succulent, yeah, if you don't put it in direct sunlight or if you overwater it, like things that are actually good intentions, yeah. but that's just not what that plant needs in order to grow. So I feel like every individual also has their own general formula mm. for what helps them to grow. So I'm curious if you can answer the question of like, what three things do you think you uniquely need in order to expand? Oh, I need space. Um, and I know that when in times of correction, I need uh, acknowledgement because uh, I a man, I have a fragile ego, ego. So I need acknowledgement on the areas that are working <laughs> before you get into the ones that are not working. Um, and so, and then the third thing I think, um, I need to feel trust in my decisions from my partner. And so if all those things come into play, when you're correcting me with those things in mind, I think I'll be growing exponentially e easier. <laughs> that's what I think I would add to yours what I feel from you is mm. that like um, it maybe that's kind of the dual thing you're talking about acknowledging your strengths while also um, bring in my strengths that I think that you don't have yeah does that make sense yeah like I think that in this process that you're in right now we're both going through identity crises on our own um, to some capacity which uh, we've talked about in this video we're going through a hard time right now do you feel that uh yeah what do you feel? When you are not feeling like 
you have a secure grip on anything, you're gonna expose raw parts of yourself that might make me feel attacked. And I'm sure it's vice versa. Yeah, I was gonna say that, that like, it's kind of interesting to me when I think about right now, how we're going through the same things independently. It kind of feels hard to bring that together. Does it have to be together? Because usually when someone's going through a hard time, it's one partner. And the other partner is, as you say it, dry. While the other one is standing in the rain, we're both in the rain. I just want to make sure that there's a world where it's okay for us to feel bad, for it not to be about each other, for us not to take it out on each other, and for us not to feel like we have to fix the other person's problems. No, I agree. Uh, overall, I don't feel negative about what we're going through. I don't know if you do. No, I think it's necessary. It's just shitty. Yeah. It's okay to be shitty. Not shitty, though. I love you. I love you, too. Sometimes the truth hurts. <laughs>